Come on, let's get my language. Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. We got a lot to get to, Garnett. So, Yuri, um, you know, you've watched these. Interrupt me if you want, but I'm going to try to keep it moving. And one thing I did this week, guys, I'm tr trying to Im um, improve the process. We're going to see the play in regular speed, and then I have it at like 70% speed or half speed the next play. So we get to see him twice, once fast, once slow. Should give us a better chance to analyze. So Linderbaum, I didn't draw the circles. He's the guy snapping the ball. Here we go against the Jets, and we're going to see what Lamar was talking about, about him climbing up to that second level. He's going to trip on this one and still get to the linebacker. And he's got some nasty to his game, Garnett, something I didn't. I noticed in college, but it's translated right away. If there's a scrap or after the whistle, look at the balance and body control to be able to still square that up. Uh, Andrews kind of missed his block there. Could have been a bigger run. Tyler Linderbaum climbing to the second level. Uh, here we go again. Watch him climb to the second level. And I really like this one because, like we were talking about earlier, Garnett, on this one, he has to stick with this guy a little longer to let Zeitler get there and then climbs up to it. So, Yuri, Garnett, comment. That's one of the things we were talking about. The first one, we saw him bypass it and get there quickly. That time he had to stick and go. We we're seeing the timing of Tyler Linderbaum. Absolutely, man. Right there, he passed off Carl Davis effortlessly. And Carl Davis is a he former Raven, 6'5", at least on a, on a, on a good day, 6'5", three, 350. Like, literally, he's solid, man. So the fact that he did that so smooth, man, is just – that the whole he, if, if he can get under like he just did it there he he wins that's all that matters. Yuri, talk about his timing for for real quick, man. Um, you know you you see it with Linderbaum. He's literally he understands leverage and he's using one arm, getting under the shoulder pad and continuously running. Um, and that that is something that is absolutely magnificent from his game. Um, and then you see him obviously reach the second level. Very very. Very smooth. And obviously here, uh, you showed it before. He trips, gets through, and absolutely blows up. I think that's Quincy Williams there, linebacker for the Jets. Yeah, he struggled with uh, Quentin Williams, uh, uh, the defensive lineman, but he got to Quincy Williams a lot. 2Q Williams on the Jets roster. So here we go. We're going to look at this Patriots play one more time and then move on. We got some of his run blocking at first. Now we're going to move on to the pass blocking. So let's let it roll a few more plays here, gentlemen. See what we got here on this play. This is against the Patriots again. You see some zone concepts. I love this one because of the IQ. Um, now, I want you to watch closely on the replay. He is trying to go between Powers and Falele. I'm going to pause it right there. You see where Justice Hill is heading? You see where Linderbaum is heading? They're hoping Falele can kick out. Ricard can kick out on their left. They're hoping uh, Ben Powers can seal to the right. That doesn't happen. So, Linderbaum's acting like a fullback on this play, and he's going to say there's no hole. All right, Justice, let's go over here. Justing on the fly, and, of course, again, he's going to finish that man off like he doesn't have a family to go home to. Um, just high IQ play you see over and over again. Look how quick off the snap he is. Now, this is a sneak by Mark Andrews. He ends up getting five yards out of it because Linderbaum's so quick off the snap. He doesn't even go to the ground, bro. He's just – and, of course, he's going to give a little shove. He likes that action, boss. Linderbaum, here you go, bro, the screen game. Watch him get out. You know, it's not going to be perfect when you're out in that space on a guy with a number nine. Um, but he's going to go, and he's going to reach a safety on this play um, like he's the same size and quickness as that safety. Maybe it's a cornerback. I'm not sure, some kind of DB. Um, so we're getting into the pass blocking here. What do you think – what have you thought about his pass blocking so far? Because – I think if he gets against an explosive athlete like Quinton Williams, he's going to have some problems because of the quickness and power that everything that Quinton Williams has. He's not going to be a liability, but that'll give him problems like every other center. But if he's up against like one of these kind of sloppy body type dudes, we'll be able to see he's got plenty of power in that situation. Garnett, Linderbaum on the pass blocking. Hey, so with that being said, that you know, Quentin Williams is a is a grown freaking man. Like, but the funny thing about the NFL, there's only one Quentin Williams. Like, there's only a couple Fletcher Coxes of the world. Even hey, we can say our own with Travis Jones and uh, with Pierce, right? With that being said, like, uh, I feel like those sloppy bodies, like you were talking about, he's going to be able to. Uh, I'm saying 
win majority of those battles, especially in the third or fourth quarter when these guys are getting wore out. They're just, you know, obviously, hopefully we got the lead by then. And basically, these guys are going to be, you know, tired out. And then the special man that Linderbaum is just a savvy, like you just said, how he's just a smart, high IQ football player with the nastiness about him. And he's obviously he's in really phenomenal shape. I just think that he's going to be perfectly fine down the stretch. And it's just going to get better. And then obviously, whoever the left guard is, is going to be better as well. I feel like just in timing, like how we talked about the secondary jailing, the offensive line is going to be the same exact way. But then the bomb, I really do see a Pro Bowl slash maybe all pro potential out of him, man. It's just everything about him just too smooth, man. So, Yuri, stick on the pass blocking for me, bro. Give me your, give me your assessment. Uh, so far, uh, it's the same thing I saw from the draft. Die slowly. That's what he's been doing. Um, he's not going to get absolutely blown up. He, like I said before, he understands leverage. He understands how to anchor, and he will continue doing that no matter how big the guy is. I mean, you see, I think, Raekwon Davis or whoever it was, Christian Wilkins, six seven, lined up right over the top of him, and he, he just anchors down, uh, holds down the fort. So I'm, I'm pleased with him. Um, sure, there's room for improvement, like you said, with maybe the – quicker, faster, freakier athletes. But uh, at the same time, he still holds them. Um, so I'm pleased with it. I added this one on because look how quick he gets out of his stance. I mean, bro, he's out of his stance before the other guys are even moving. Um, just a ridiculously quick start. Like he snaps the ball like he knows he's snapped. Look at that. Bro. Right in front of him. And he's stronger than you want to give him credit for. Once he gets those hands on you, he is incredibly strong. So that's why I think he'll have – uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchups against a sloppier body or a less dynamic athlete, he's going to be fine. But Jim Toss, that man right in there, that is the Duvernay play. Be good to watch that in slow motion. Watch, here comes the blitzing linebacker, picks him up and dumps him onto power side. Um, allows Lamar to make a great throw. So Lamar didn't even have anybody in his face on that. Here we go. Watch him pass off this stunt very Come beautifully. On, man. Come on, get, get out of here. Some gratuitous uh, Rashad Bateman yak there, but again, watch him. It's like he doesn't even feel him, um, or he doesn't even see him. He just feels him coming, like he knows what's coming. And uh, it's just the IQ shows over and over again, the feel for the game that Garnett and I were talking about in April. There he is handling Quinn Williams on that one. Um, and that, once and that, going, that's a perfect example of him dying slowly. The guy's bigger than him. But he's not gonna let the guy just absolutely run him over. And the one thing too, like literally, I think we, hopefully it's just the same one. If you watch, once he digs his feet and he anchors, and he got under Quentin, Quentin was literally he was done. Like, like literally, you can watch if you watch that rep at the end of it. He won. As crazy as it sounds, yeah, he he got there. He pushed him up, but he won that rep. Like literally, I can tell you right there. Stop. Like, literally, he had him. He had him. Yeah, it almost reminds you of Ronnie Stanley, where it's like, I give, I give, and then you're not going anywhere. And you see the pushback there, the leverage, the hand placement, the elbows tucked in. Everything is just perfect, uh, perfectly aligned right there. For So, you know, don't sleep on his, on his strength. Once he gets you, he's good. Um, here we go again. That was a nice club move by Quinn and Williams. Didn't move him, bro. Another example of look at his base. He's getting slapped, but he doesn't go anywhere. Just great job. Want to get Chris just joking in here for the last two plays. Hey, what's hey. up, Chris? Yo, what up, everybody? What's going on, man? No, no. Hey, 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 father of the year, Chris, man. We all <laughs> did it right. <laughs> so, so, Chris, we're in the middle of a uh, Tyler Linderbaum film study, but before we continue, uh, are you going to have to go to elementary school and kick a elementary school girl's butt, or is this a little boy uh, who scrapped with your with your daughter, sir? No, it was a little girl. Um, they were racing, and I guess the other little girl lost, so she pushed my daughter. So, um, you know, I'm, I might have to go drop kick somebody over there. Yeah, hey, you know, drop kick a teacher if you can, man. I'm <laughs> been on my nerves lately, bro. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm preaching to the choir. Okay, I had this one uh, teacher, my son's in second grade, brings home his sandwich, right? I don't know, ham sandwich, whatever it was. I asked him why he didn't need a sandwich. Uh, because the second grade teacher decided to go 
uh, vegan hero on him, telling him that he was eating a dead animal, uh, and that's disgusting, and he should not be eating that. So that's what they're teaching him, bro. It's like politics talk in school and uh, social justice issues and preaching their own morals, religious or otherwise, on them. And instead of just teaching them that, you know, just teach them the math and, and let me do the parenting, Chris. Hey, man, if, if I was you, I would have killed a squirrel in front of that person and slapped them with it, telling my kid they can't eat whatever they want to eat, man. Shut up. Give her the Ben Cleveland special, bro. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and this is Knox from Ravens 8 Uh, uh Talk about the people's champ. That's Knox. Yeah, people's elbow, man. F it. F it, man. F it. But, uh, but yeah, man. This is pretty great. Yeah. Did you buy this sandwich? I think not. Yeah. And the kids, dude, he's, I'm talking like second grade. He's probably, it was either first or second grade. He's a seven or eight year old kid that thought he was doing wrong by eating the sandwich, bro. It drove me nuts. So, uh, Chris, you missed a, a lot of Linder Bomb, but we're going to finish up this this film study here. I want to get your thoughts on these last couple of plays, sir. All right. Because Garnett and Yuri has been talking a lot. All right. Let's get it. I know Garnett hates Tyler Linder Bomb. Oh, I yeah. hate him with a passion, my brother. <laughs> So here he is, Chris, picking up a stunt, um, recognizing that Zeitler's got it and recognizing that Ben Powers was going to be beat on that stunt. Okay, you see him? He's not help He's just helping. He sees Powers way late on the stunt. That's going to be a quarterback hit. Uh, Melvin Ingram coming at him, Chris. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I see that. Keeps his head nice on a swivel. Make sure he got his arm out to make sure uh, Zeitler's good. Keeps his right. arm out. And then he just comes off and blasts Ingram. Yeah. And that's what I like, too, because a lot of the times you just see uh, offensive linemen, they'll just put their body in front of a guy. And uh, he really puts that, you know, that effort, that oomph into it to, to knock Ingram back. So I, I like that. You know, Chris, you notice his feistiness, um, something we saw in college. We talked about centers when you came on, man. We did the whole center crew. But, like, Linderbaum's feistiness – and like competitiveness, he's through the whistle kind of guy, man. He wants some extra action on every play. It looks like. Yeah, he does, and and you know, I mean, a, a guy who who beat Tristan Wirfs in, in wrestling, a dude that outweighs him and is way bigger than him, uh, you know, that guy's coming. You know, he's coming for blood. You know, if he's able to beat him in a wrestling match, so uh, you know, this guy, he's just not going to be pushed over. He's not going to be finesse about it. Uh, he he wants that smoke. Yeah, man. I love the former wrestler. Knox says former wrestler, and you can see it. Yeah, dude, his, his just overall body control. Before he got on here, we saw him uh, bully Quinn and Williams a little bit on one pass block. You might remember from your film study. But, like, once he digs in and anchors, man, and gets that leverage, you can see his body control, his feel for leverage is just so natural. We got another player, too, Chris, uh, before we get to this Bills game. Here he is again. Uh, you see some of the natural strength there against – so one of these big bodies, number 98, and I know Garnett loves seeing this when people question uh, Linderbaum being undersized. And that's that. that The undersized probably helped him there, too, because he keeps perfect leverage, and he's able to get up under the dude's chest plate, whoever 98 is. So that's that's yeah, a big Carl right Davis. There. Oh, that's Carl Davis. Oh, it was a Carl yeah. Davis revenge game. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, and Davis trips a little bit, but still. It's just Linderbaum's leverage uh, and the extension of those short little 31 and a quarter inch arms. Um, but, yeah, don't sleep on his power, man. He, he's got some natural power. He's able to put his hips into it. Great catch by Andrews right there. I think fans remember that play. So there we go, fellas. Some Tyler Linderbaum film study. Chris, we missed you at the beginning. So I want to hear what you think about Linderbaum overall as a player, uh, how he's played so far, and what we can expect from him. Just let's just concentrate on 2022. If you want to put it out further, go for it, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I, I was surprised to be honest with you because you no, know, he missed a lot of time, uh, and that's valuable time for a rookie. So, I mean, if he would have been a vet, I would have been kind of worried about him. I mean, we see how because it's kind of taken about three weeks and still not even fully there for Zeitler and Moses to kind of get on the same page when it comes to the the run game and and being being able to have that time and next to the dude, uh, the guy next to you. So for him to be a rookie and miss the time that he did and be able to come in and, and play at the level that he's playing in, it's, it's been phenomenal. So, 
you know, awesome, awesome for him. I give him an A so far in this season.